What can we expect from Eagle River moving forward? Is it going to crater anytime soon? Are we going to expect to see a slowdown? Are things actually going to increase and become even crazier in Eagle River than what we've seen up to this point? My name is Jamin Gurker. I'm a realtor in South Central Alaska, and my mission is to help you to build an intentional and a significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching you in real estate. And today I'm going to be giving you the market update for what's going on in Eagle River. Now, this is a very interesting market because it's approximately halfway between Anchorage proper and it's going to be halfway between the Matsu Valley as well. So it's one of the one of the most interesting markets here in the area. Before we get started though, do make sure you get this video like, do subscribe if you haven't done so already. And let's go and jump into today's market update, looking at the residential, the condo, and the multifamily market. Now the first thing that we always look at when we're trying to decipher how the market's doing is to look at the number of properties we have available on the market. This time last year, we had 112 homes that were available on the market, and now it's 94. That's actually the lowest we have for the data, even that I have in front of me, going all the way back to 2014, and it's probably lower going a lot further back than that. That's just what I have available. So inventory remains low, and it's actually lower than what we've seen up to this point. Now, the next thing that we see is that the number of properties that actually sold, this is where it gets interesting, the number of properties that actually sold this time last year in Eagle River were 99. This year, it's 58. So despite the inventory being really low, the number of sold properties actually has started to decelerate a little bit. Now, is that going to have an impact on the average sold price? Well, let's take a look real quick. Now, the average sold price went from about 424,000 this time last year to about 475,000 this year, which means we actually went from, I think it was roughly about 9% average sold price increase, and this year it's right around an 11% average sold price increase from where we were the year before. So despite the fact that we are seeing the number of overall properties selling get throttled way back, we're still seeing a really aggressive appreciation for the prices here in the area. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is what's going on in the condo market here in Eagle River. So this isn't a particularly big part of the market, but it is growing, and so I want to make sure we include it and keep you up to date. So the number of condos that are available in the market right now is 11. The number of condos that were available this time last year were 19. So kind of the same trend that we're seeing on the residential side, we're seeing fewer condos that are available. Most of the condos that are available I've noticed have kind of been more new construction more than anything else, but that is something to really keep in mind. Now, unlike the residential market, what we're seeing is that we actually see an increase in the number of sold properties and condos compared to this time last year. This time last year, there were 10 condos that sold, now we're seeing 15. So. Again, not huge numbers because this is the condo market, but we are seeing an increase of the number of properties that actually sold. Now, the average sold price for condos in Eagle River has increased, not surprisingly, because it went from about 266,000 this time last year to about 296, 297,000 this time this year, which means it's seen an approximately 11.3% increase for the average sold price for for condos. Now, this is what we would expect, just as the inventory does remain so low, and you know, not really seeing a cratering of that market anytime soon. We'll talk more about that in the summary, though. Before we jump into the multifamily stuff, though, let's go and take a break real quick here. For those of you who've been watching for a while, you do know that I do, in fact, host the Alaskan Journey podcast. The link for that is going to be in the description section down below, but what I do in that podcast is I actually do interview people who have recently moved up here and people have lived up here for a while as well and talk about their experiences and really kind of give you the authentic feel for what it's like living up here in Alaska. So do make sure you check that out. And if you're looking at moving up here, do make sure you reach out to me on my website. The link for that is going to be in the description section down below so you can get a copy of my free relocation guide. Now, let's go and talk about multifamily properties. There's not a whole lot going on in multifamily properties in Eagle River. This time last year, there were three. Now it's two. So not a whole lot of movement either way as far as uh, multifamilies go. The number of properties that actually sold this time last year in the multifamily category for Eagle River was two, and this year it's two, so no movement there. Now, last but not least, the average sold price this time last year, just for the month of July, was about 516,000. This year, it's about 497,500. Now, before everyone gets too excited and starts you know, banging the drum about a, a market collapse and this is it, slow down 
You know, this is a very small pool, only two properties we're talking about on either year. So it really could just be a, a difference of what properties actually sold. Maybe the year before it was four plexes, this year it was all duplexes. It's really hard to, to tell specifically with multifamily properties. Across the board, just in my experience in Eagle River lately and multifamilies, the values are going up. It's kind of hard to say exactly how much just because we don't have a whole lot of data because it's not a particularly big sector of the market. Now, looking across the board, really for all of Eagle River, the big takeaway I want you to see is that even though we're going to see a slowdown in the number of properties that are selling and a, a slowdown of the number of contracts people are getting under just because interest rates are going up, that doesn't mean the price is going to suddenly fall out the bottom because we're, we're still seeing a really aggressive appreciation from where we were the year before. Because keep in mind, I mean, it accelerated like crazy the past couple of years best thing we could hope for right now is that that kind of pulls back a little bit as we're moving forward. So instead of seeing double digit inflation, maybe we just see, you know, high single digit appreciation every year for the properties that are there. That honestly is really what you want to see. I know as a buyer, you're probably thinking, oh, I just want this to crash, blah, blah, blah. Believe me, having a more steady market gives me a lot more confidence in purchasing something because I know the Time I'm going to spend on the other side once I have a property is going to be way more than when I'm in the position where I want this to go down. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, I sure hope this was useful. I'm sure, hope I didn't ruin anyone's day. Who have been waiting for this big crash? I'm not expecting it. Could always be wrong, but really what I'm expecting is just to see a slowdown of the rate at which things are increasing. So if you do have questions, do feel free to reach out to me on my uh, website or on Facebook. All links for all of that is going to be in the description section down below, and we'll see you next time.